Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul with RP1 series in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1. In this episode we are going to try to get that orbital flight with maneuvers and 2 plus crew contract done. But after that we need to move on to this Venus transfer window. And also another contract I picked up. Let's take a look. I did do a few things ahead of time and picking up contracts. I got the Venus Orbit and Venus Atmospheric Probe contracts, as well as the first docking contract. That's pretty lucrative on the advance, but not on completion. But we're going to have two probe controlled targets uh, dock to satisfy that, because that's the cheapest way to do it. Uh, but um, if that doesn't work, we'll have to try something else. It's possible that we will want to just use a crewed vehicle in order to do the docking. And uh, yeah. There are various technologies I'm waiting on in order to move on with landing on the moon, potentially. Also, I should probably upgrade the launch pad. Um, well, I guess at this point, the question is, which launch pad? Um, because uh, I think 600 tons is going to be a bit tight, and this isn't even the 600 ton one. Uh, yeah, maybe I should just start on a completely new launch pad for the next step which is 1,200 tons, which still isn't much when you think about it. Of course, Saturn V was 3,000 tons. There haven't been a whole lot of rockets in the 1,200 ton range. Normally, the sweet spot is about 600 tons, and then there's a certain void where, uh, I guess, Falcon Heavy is in there right now, uh, but not, not too many rockets. And then suddenly, Saturn V, N1, and Energia and the space shuttle. So anyway, uh, minimize docking targets. So let's just uh, get things done. Let's hope that we can fulfill this contract. But we've got some fun buffer. Uh, gosh darn it, I accidentally rolled it out on the 600 ton pad. So that costs more. Um, yeah, it also took six days to roll out. So we really don't have time for another opportunity on this contract, we'll just have to fail it. Okay, Naki and Daffri, I think, are the only ones free right now. In fact, after this attempt, I don't even know if we'll have any Kerbals ready to go. So, it's probably moot anyway, even if we had a rocket available. A rare case where the whole uh, Kerbals needing downtime actually has an effect. Okay, well, here we go again. Um, game is a bit choppy right now, I gotta say. Let me double check that the fuel cells are in the right place and I didn't forget to actually do that. Yeah, they're up here now. And ignition. And launch. I might need to clean up some stuff again. So I think I've diminished how much debris I have in this save. Okay, approaching max Q. Obviously a somewhat more dangerous situation for this rocket than others because of how tall it is and thin. Lots of stress on it. Okay, at this point we'll shut two engines down. And we are down to two engines. Okay, it was a good burn through the first stage. Second stage. Okay. The almighty LR-105. Okay, making orbit. And shut down. That should be an apoapsis that is okay. Yes, it's starting to count the time. Three days we have to stay here. Okay, so separate off that. Okay. Oh, that's doing that. Uh, why? Why? I don't know. Every time. Okay, um, did I have a extend solar panel action group? Maybe. There's a lot of solar panels to extend. So I put eight solar panels this time to help with recharging too. They'll overlap a little bit. Please don't mind. <laughs> I mean, 
it's, yeah, uh, the, the little corners are going to overlap. All right, so we seem to be recharging, which is a good sign. I'll just run one fuel cell. So we pass through the nighttime side. And we're going to see whether we fully recharge. We do. I hope it's not using too much of the hydrogen and oxygen, though, for the fuel cell. I'm going to turn off this fuel cell. For the time being, of course, we still have hydrogen boil off, though, which is weird because the hydrogen's in the cabin, but. Okay, that's recharging. Let's see if just the eight solar panels are good enough to recharge on the daylight side after we go through night. Maybe we don't even need the fuel cells, though, obviously, it would be prudent to keep them. Uh, not quite. It's a little bit short, but that's fine. It seems like we only need one, but we might as well run two at the same time for now while we're trying to regain that electric charge. So that's day one. We're looking good. Yeah, we're really close on time. We've only got seven days to complete the contract. Uh, yeah, we have to spend five days on the upper orbit, so... And then presumably we have to bring them back down. Looks like this time it was only uh, 12 hours or so before we needed to do this. Maybe I should check our orientation. No, that's pretty much flat on to the sun. Maybe it's dependent on the time warp level I have. I get the feeling that when I time warp faster, it depletes more electric charge. Like it's skipping some recharge cycles. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, uh, the electric charge seemed to do much better when we were just at this time warp level. Not a surprise. There. There is that sort of thing where if you go to the fifth level, it doesn't quite track the electric charge properly. Okay, we should be getting close to finishing up this part of the contract. There we go. Uh, we actually need to burn out of periapsis would be the best thing. So, let me turn on the fuel cell now. Fuel cells. I don't like it that we're going to have our apoapsis on the nighttime side, though. That means we're going to be spending more time over there than over here. But let's just get it done. I think it'll be okay. We haven't used half of our hydrogen and oxygen yet, so that's good. And it shouldn't be that long in orbit. Still, we're trying to get to uh, basically a thousand kilometers. Okay, so here we go with the AJ-10 advanced. Technically, we didn't need infinite ignitions for this purpose. Okay, that should be fine, right? Yeah, it's starting to count down to five days. Uh, food, water, and oxygen, we basically got eight days of that. And electric charge is recharging because of the fuel cell. Okay. Um, let's go back to sun orientation. Well, this time I've been able to time warp through like two days without running the fuel cell. It's bizarre. Yeah, it's still going electric charge wise. I still don't have the fuel cells on. And it's not depleting. 
somehow this higher orbit with the apoapsis on the nighttime side is uh, is good. It does mean that the sun pokes over the horizon a little bit earlier. Maybe that helps, but still, it's quite the difference. Okay, well, we are on the final day, and I might as well run the fuel cell at this point. Well, now we've depleted it. Okay. 15 more minutes. Okay, all we have to do is return home safely. I'm going to... Well, I would like to land in daylight, so we'll go around one more time. And as usual, deorbit around Australia. We do have a backup propulsion system just in case. I'm not entirely sure why when this thing doesn't have a test flight configuration, to be honest. But, whatever. That would certainly be useful if this was limited to four ignitions, though. Excellent. Okay, everything nominal so far. Um, despite the scent mode being on, I'm wondering whether we're going to get some high g-forces. What do we have now? 4.7 as the max. We appear to be coming down over Mexico, so it might be a ground landing. Okay, g-forces are diminishing. We didn't pass 4.7 g's, so that's okay. The ground is actually pretty bumpy here, and we are right in the middle of Mexico, so that makes sense. Basically the continuation of the Rocky Mountains. Not the best place to land, but hopefully the fact that the terrain mesh is really stretched out in real solar system means that we're not going to have serious slopes. That, that bit right there is a little bit more... Oh, maybe that's just a cloud artifact. Says the desert down there. Doesn't say mountains. Ooh, that is a bad peak right there. That, that thing, I don't want anywhere near that thing. That just popped out of nowhere. Gosh darn it! <laughs> uh, yeah, let's 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 stop before that, please. I didn't think there was anything like that in real solar system. So now somebody has to look up these coordinates and tell me what what mountain that is. This should not be called desert. This is definitely mountains. This is elevated terrain right here. And green. Feel like I should open up X-Plane 11 and find that mountain. This, this slope is slopey. This is pretty slopey right here. I hope Realism Overhaul doesn't nerf friction. Wow, even with uh, both parachutes, we were only at 8.6 meters per second. I thought this was less than that, but then again, I've been splashing down. And probably with less mass because I would have used the fuel up there. We, we're still packing quite a lot of fuel. Uh... Oh, 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 oh. Slow down. Uh, okay, well, um, no, no, not that. No rolly, no rolly. Slow us down. Okay. Well, Gemini is supposed to set down horizontally. No, please. Friction. Help. Help.
Uh, okay, uh, maybe I'll catch it next round. At least our heat shield is sort of on the downward side of it, on the downward slope. Preventing us from straight up rolling downhill. That was dangerous. That's the worst landing I've seen in Realism Overhaul and Real Solar System. I mean, aside from outright crashes, of course, but uh, I haven't seen terrain like that. I mean, that's... It's tough to hit bad terrain in real solar system, to be honest. Okay, well, no XP gain. And they're both out of commission, at least uh, they're both out of commission for the same time now. That's new. <laughs> okay, uh, basically two months. So we don't have any... Oh wait, uh, Phil V. Kerman is ready for the next mission. Okay. We lost four? We lost... Oh, right, because they all retired. I hate seeing that. By the way, that's a lot to hire a Kerbal for. Uh, but at least I turned off the um, training, so we'll, this counts as the cost of the training. It's still quite expensive. A rookie Kerman. I feel like we could hire and train a couple more. A rookie Kerman. Uh, these are all pilots. Jed Hat is Lauki Kerman. Jed Hat Kerman. Jed, Kat, Jed Hat Kerman is very stupid. Lauki Kerman. Yep. Better choice all around. Okay. Uh, advisable expenditure, I think. So let's double check that uh, we fulfilled that. Yep. So, next thing, uh, we'll take care of uh, these two maneuvers, do the Venus launch, and then try the whole docking bit. But let's just uh, run through these two. Okay, well, this maneuver is just a depressingly large mid-course adjustment. Um, it is manageable, though. So, this is an orbiter for Mars. And even after this adjustment, I think it'll have enough to get into orbit. I'm sure it was plotted as such. Okay, ignition. Ah, oh, well, now maybe we don't. <laughs> well, we'll see. Uh, that engine failed, unfortunately. Okay, well, yeah, that causes problems. We can't use that 500 meters per second. Stupid fake infinite ignition thing. I don't think test flight takes into consideration how long it's been in flight. I'm not sure, though. Okay probe engine. Now we did have a backup for this Piper and that one had a little bit more Delta V to work with but if its AJ-10 doesn't light then that would still be a problem. Okay well looks like we need a little bit more Delta V to make orbit but let's see what's actually going on. And let's check out the parameters of the required orbit. Maximum periapsis of 6,752. It doesn't say anything about apoapsis. So first important thing, but we do want to get that periapsis as close as possible. Mm, okay, well that's pretty darn close. Um, we'll take it. I hope that's a real orbit that it's going to count. All right, I'm going to add the SOI change alarm. And we'll meet up with this at that time and see if it can make that orbit to fill the contract. Other than that, it's recharging, even though it's in an awkward position and everything else looks good. Okay, and next we have a maneuver with uh, its backup, the Piper 1A. And that's in seven days. We're building another Piper 1A, but that one is going to Venus. Okay, it's the same magnitude of maneuver, but this time we have enough Delta V in this stage already. And it's an AJ-10 advanced, which means no test flight configuration, two ignitions, and basically all is well. So uh, we, we are good. We're good to go. Should not be a problem. And then we can get on with our Venus missions. So, 
Even right now, we can ignite. And this should have more than enough to capture into orbit around Mars, so backup mission is good. Assuming this maneuver is properly plotted, of course, and not tricking us somehow. Okay, we will have to do the rest of our CS. And if we make orbit around... Okay, I really don't need it adjusting its periapsis right now. But it shouldn't be too much worse to make orbit around Mars, right? Than the other mission. Yeah, we could get into a nice low orbit even. Well, lower than Phobos, which is low enough. So there's that, but before we do that, we need to reorient so that this actually gets solar input. Um, try and do that manually. Yeah, I messed everything up on that maneuver. Okay. Okay, yeah, that's probably changed our Mars situation quite a lot. <laughs> Look at that. Well... Nothing's ever easy. All right, let's uh, keep it there, add the SOI change, and get out of here before we mess up the orbit anymore. Okay, this is our first launch to Venus out of uh, three or four. Uh, we'll see. And SAS is on, throttle is up. It's a daytime launch, thankfully. And ignition. <laughs> And launch. So this is going to be a Venus orbiter. So we have lots of delta V as you can see. Okay, booster set. Hopefully we've got somebody on the ground to catch that. A nice big net, maybe. Okay, separation. And the NK-9V has ignited. First stage was okay. Okay, fairing separation. So, this should look familiar. I could have ditched two of the solar panels I did on the atmospheric probes. Okay... Perfect first launch. Um, we got into a really, really nice tight orbit with the stage running out. So yeah, no problems there. Let me throttle down. This here is an AJ-10 Advanced, so just four ignitions this time, but no test flight. Okay, we have a nice maneuver. 3,474 meters per second to get to Venus is about as low as it gets really and we're out of communication unfortunately but there seems to be a nice communication location right there it's just ah there we go now we've got it okay node please and make sure we don't waste an ignition ignition okay good timing on the burn and we can finish the rest of our CS. Got plenty of spare delta V. The question is how much does it take to capture into orbit around Venus without using a heat shield, right? We, on the atmospheric probes, we have heat shields. So in theory, they could take care of the orbital thing first and then dip back down if we get the right altitudes and everything. Oh, that looks pretty good to me. Uh, going a little bit high there, but the contract contract says maximum periapsis of 12,000 kilometers, so, oh well, that's still more than that. Um, let's see what happens if we do a burn inside Venus SOI. 
I mean, that seems minor, and we've got three ignitions on this engine still. Okay, that should be a safe altitude, and then if we capture... Does not take much at all. 1,500 right there, and if we really wanted to make it a nice tight orbit, 3,200, both of those numbers combined, we can still manage with our 4,000 meters per second of delta V, so this is good. Now we're just going to add that alarm for the maneuver right at the start of Venus SOI, and we may have a good Venus orbiter. And it is on its way. The dish is tuned to Earth. Has a few instruments. Perturbation data. Yep. Okay, so that's all set. Let's launch one of the atmospheric probes. Okay, here we go with the atmospheric probe, or at least one atmospheric probe. And I'll consider next time whether to do our backups. Um, the launch window seems particularly good. So I'm not too worried, but we'll see how this goes. Of course, the backups were mainly if there was a failure on an engine during launch. So here we go, ignition. Now this is actually an RD-253. So maybe there's more chance of a failure on launch here. Ooh, and Wigglies. And I've dubbed this the Beck 1, and I got that by uh, taking 253, turning it into BEC, which is Beck, and so this is Beck 1. It's a little bit cheaper than the Piper rocket. So this does have a heat shield for the atmospheric part, and I didn't know exactly how much ablator to put on. So I put 30%. So to have the turbo pump sticking out here, but first stage burn was good. Regardless of that. Uh, okay. NK9V lighting a little bit lower in the atmosphere than normal. Okay, fairing separation. Mainly because I wanted to see the delta V reading. Okay. Okay, wrapping up another excellent burn to orbit here if it lasts through the last few seconds. Okay, 244 by 169, 123 meters per second left, and we seem to be okay for separation. And RCS. This one has just two solar panels, because we are going closer to the sun. And we really don't need that much. Its drain is uh, 200 watts without time warp. With time warp, it is better than that. Uh, well, we have to activate this first, so we'll, we'll double check. But you can see recharging right now. And even with this active, it seems to be okay. Funny, I thought it would have more drain when this was active. Hmm. Anyway, uh, we've got commutrons as well, and that'll save us from losing connection close to the surface. I think just two. All right, now let's plot for Venus. Should be a good one. Uh, unfortunately, I tried warped a little bit too vigorously, but basically, very low delta V requirements as before and go and one thing that distracted me was of course this visual glitch that we have here don't know why that happens there's no situation where the star field should be superimposed on the planet Ooh, really close to our booster right there but safe Oh, it's actually going away. Um, maybe a mid-course adjustment on this one? Okay, it's a rough correction, but we'll handle it. 
Okay, this isn't great, but I'm satisfied with it. We'll do this burn in Venus SOI. I messed up the correction burn a bit. and uh, But we have enough delta V once we get there to do this, and that'll get us into Venus's atmosphere, which is what we need. So this is all set, and it's got parachutes, but they're actually still Mars, Mars parachutes. I forgot to change that. So it might be a long trip to the surface of Venus. Now I don't necessarily want to launch our backups if these are going to work because it's getting a little bit cluttery. We've got a lot of probes uh, trying to communicate with uh, remote tech. I've, I've cleaned up most of the debris, but it's still a little bit laggy. So I'll consider that whether we need to launch the backups or not. I think they would. there would be one more Venus opportunity before the contract runs out. Oh, there's a little bit of auto saving. Um, before the contract runs out so that if we want to launch the backups, then if these so happen to fail, we can do so. So I'm going to add this alarm for Venus SOI. Oh, no, I guess I'll just add this maneuver. And this probe is set and we'll continue on with other things next time. And among those things will be first docking apparently and uh, maybe some tests of lunar landing equipment let's put it that way so with that i'll say thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did enjoy this video please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and i'll see you next time